Brawlers, baby. You're watching the Brawler Sports Boxing Show podcast, starring CEO Rick Muhammad. The Brawler Sports Boxing Show podcast. Let's go, chat. We go. What's up, boxing fans? This is your boy Rick Muhammad, Brawler Sports Media in the building. This is the Brawler Sports Boxing Show. I'm doing a follow up and a recap now, as you all remember, about a week, week and a half ago, leading up to my man. Bola's fight, who's converting over from amateurs to the pros at 175, had his first pro fight against a guy in Rosemont, Illinois, that was 3-0, and and Bola was a standout in the amateurs who stepped up and said, hey, I'm going pro. So he had his work cut out for him with a guy that was 3-0, and and for what I hear, the guy could box, so he was pretty decent. Let's let Bola uh, tell you guys how that went. And welcome back to the show, Bola. Congratulations, man. Let's go, champ. Thank you for having me. It's always a pleasure. So, uh, yeah, I fought a guy that was 3-0. Uh, typically, uh, usually, uh, when you first start start off in uh, professional boxing, people fight tomato cans. Um, they fight guys that uh, have losing records. But uh, that's not what we wanted to do. We wanted to uh, we want to challenge uh, ourselves and I want to challenge myself uh, to be uh, the best that I can be. So that's why I face somebody with a winning record that's undefeated um, that actually fought in Chicago uh, in April and he won. Um, so I wanted to challenge myself and I did and I won unanimous de- decision. Um, and it was a great experience. Uh, the transition from pro to amateur, uh, the gloves are smaller, so uh, the punches may hurt um, more. But with my style, I don't get hit a lot, so uh, I didn't really take that much da- damage, if any damage at all. But uh, the other side to that is my punches hurt more too so the dude uh yeah it wasn't a nice night for him um he he was he was hurt and i could tell um, exactly when when i was hitting him that it was affecting him because i believe in 175 those are 10 ounce gloves correct yes they are okay and then for most fans who don't know all fighters in all weight classes and different weight divisions do not wear the same size gloves if it's a smaller guy the little guys, the 130s, the 120 guys, they wear like eight ounce gloves. Correct. So they got some, if they're packing some punching power, them little cats can rock and roll with eight ounce of gloves. Now, the big guys like Bowler and on up. So think about this Bowler's a like heavy, could be a cruiserweight, and then the heavyweights, and they're wearing just 10 ounce gloves. Their hands are wrapped professionally with tape and gauze. So now, all that knuckle pressure is still coming through those leather gloves. I don't hear, I don't care what type of gloves they are. Everlast, Reyes, Grant, those are all good gloves for the sport of boxing. But at the end of the night, you're going to feel every impact of every punch that you get touched up with. And that's what the fans need to know because I don't think I've ever broke that down before. Now, let's also talk about the transition from, from amateurs to pros. That's definitely a whole nother animal bowler. Uh, is there a different level of excitement, anxiety, nervousness, if you will? Talk about that from stepping in the ring with all the head gear on, if you will. And now this night, everything's off. Everything's off. Yep. Everything's off. Uh, funnily, um, to uh, I wore a headgear to the ring for my pro fight. <laughs> <laughs> What was that all about? What, what was that about? Let me, let me hear uh, this one. <laughs> you, you know, it's, 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 it's theatrics, you know, a little bit. Um, but it's, it's just to signify the transition from my, my first, uh, from amateur to my first pro fight. So that's why I wore it. Um, okay. To the ring, and I took it off. But, yeah, uh, there is more, definitely a little more. Oh, no, come back. Hey, I got you back. I'm, I'm <laughs> Say that again because I lost you. Okay, I'm sorry. I said there is a little bit, just uh, just a little bit more anxiety or nervousness because now if you uh, don't perform well, if you lose, that could be, you know, um, 
that could be it. Not it could be it, but it affects your career. Mentally, more. it affects you too. It, it, exactly. It affects you a lot more mentally. Um, but, you know, I've always been the type, uh, like, in, even in amateur, I didn't lose uh, a lot. I've only, I only had three losses um, in my amateur career. So okay. I never wanted to lose and I've never been, you know, a loser. So um, I've always put that pressure or had that pressure on me to perform well. But in pros, it really matters. So that pressure, uh, there is more pressure there, definitely. Absolutely. Um, to, not, to not lose or take a L or to perform well, because you're not only performing um, to get the win, but you you also have to, uh, your performance shows, uh, it allows you to get more fans and more, um, uh, let the critics rate you well. So you got to. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Which and then, and then here's a word of the wise, brother. Going into the pros, don't worry about the critics. Mm. You cannot let journalists, media, people like myself or any, because everybody's not going to be your fan. So mm. those who think they know more about talking about the sport of boxing than actually ever boxing think they know more than you. So yeah. Bola's not this, that, and the third. And you heard it from me first, blah, 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 simply because, but when they break it down, they sound like, you know, idiots. So don't worry about the criticism too much. You need to just go out there and stay, stay focused, stay on task at the job at hand. The mission, the mission is what was taught and instilled in you by your trainers, your handlers, your coaches, like my man, uh, Big Nate the Snake Jones and my man, Jazzy Jeff Mason that you work with in the gym. And whatever they instilled in you for 8, 10, 12 weeks, how long camp is for you, that's what you focus on going out and executing. All the other stuff doesn't matter. So don't sweat the small stuff. And you got to block out the crowds and mm. the opposition's family members and their friends and stay in your zone and zone bola and handle your business. Okay. And then also, I know you're used to – you got a lot of stoppages, if you will, in the amateurs because you you pack a, a mean punch. Here's the other thing about boxing: don't don't always listen to the corners and never go out looking for a knockout. If you stick to the fight plan, the knockout will happen because you will see it coming as you break your opponent down and what he's vulnerable to doing if he responds to feints. Uh, you know, he's stepping around. He drops his hands when you shoot a jab to the gut. You know you can come back with that overcross right hand on his chin and drop him. You'll know, and then you'll know what angles to give him to make him open that window up again. And when he does, that's when you crack him. And that's when the opportunity comes. When he cooperates, that's when you'll get your knockout. But you never, ever go looking, seeking the knockout because the tables can reverse. You can run out of steam, and now you're in trouble and running for your life. <laughs> right. Um, uh, I, I forgot which fighter said it, but he had one of the highest uh, KO percentages. Um, he said, uh, don't look for the knockout because when you look for it, it doesn't come. And uh, for right. him to say it, I forgot who it was, but for him to say that, uh, he knows what he's talking about. Um, because he had one of the highest uh, KO percentages. So, um, yeah, I, I agree with that, and um, it makes sense. And I, I definitely will take that uh, advice and use it. Implement. Yeah, absolutely, man. Rule of thumb. And, and, and also, now explain to everybody how, uh, how challenging, what type of strategy and fight plan was in place for you guys going into this fight to your debut, and how well of a listener – do you feel you should rate yourself on that first fight, listening to your corner and your coaches telling you you're doing this wrong, you're doing that wrong, I need you to make these adjustments now? Uh, are you listening? Are you being a sponge and absorbing all that? And then the key to that is, did you find yourself going out that next round executing those corrections? Yeah, so I do uh, rate myself very high when it comes to – uh, being coachable and my coaches will uh, would tell you the same um, I listen to my corner and I hear everything that's going on uh, around the ring um, especially to my corner um, I hear their voices and then I implement whatever they uh, are asking me to do 
So um, I think it's very important that you do. Um, and uh, for this fight that we had, I did listen to it. Uh, I think I, I did listen to what they said. However, I think um, getting the jitters out, uh, getting the first fight out uh, yeah. uh, happened to me too. Um, because yeah. uh, going back to what you were saying, I was trying to, I was trying to knock him out. I was trying to like, I was looking. I know. Uh, I was throwing them. I was throwing them bows. You got I was that throwing them bad boys. Why wouldn't you go for the knockout? But right. Now you got to remember, reel yourself back in. This ain't the amateurs, baby. Take your time. Do it right. Yeah. Um, and that's actually uh, going on to something else I wanted to say. That's why uh, I prefer to do six rounds. We wanted to do six rounds, but we didn't have – you know, I got on the card late. I got on yeah. the card on Thursday, and the fight was Saturday. Um, so um, we could, they couldn't allot a six rounds to us. They only were able to allot four rounds. Right. But, You're a debuter, too, because the commission would not allow that with this being your first time stepping in the ring as a professional fighter. Oh, really? They, yeah, they, they, I don't, I don't, I don't think most of the commissioners will allow a six round for your debut because they, first of all, they want to probably see how you're going to adapt and make adjustments in being a pro with no headgear, smaller gloves, et cetera, et cetera. So it may be like a safety precaution as well. Uh, moving forward, that's something that definitely your handlers will reach, speak to the commissioner on and say, hey, yeah, it's his second pro fight. But the kid's in tip-top shape. He can do 15 rounds. But we want to do six. So I guess that's something you'll find out next, um, coming up that next fight. Now, how would you critique yourself, Bola, on this first fight? Uh, if you, What mistakes did you, right off the bat, knowingly know that you made in this first fight? If you've re-seen the tape, if you felt what you did wrong in the moment of that specific round, what are those mistakes? And now what do you do to go back in the gym? How do you how do you rectify those those errors? Because they could cost you as well. So now your thinking, your mentality, what do you guys go back in the gym and work on? What was the mistakes and how do you go about correcting them for the next fight? So uh, like I said previously, looking for the knockout. That was probably uh, the biggest mistake and one of the uh, few mistakes that I did make. Um, how we go back to that is being patient, uh, being more relaxed and calm. Um, and when I when I hurt somebody, just touching them, touching them, and then boom, hit them with a, a shot, finding the shots, picking the shots, and just instead of just trying to um, throw haymakers every punch. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta place your punches technically, like a technician in there. Keep yeah. touching them with the jab, and the jab is the key punch. Yeah. Everything. Go downstairs with that jab, bring it back up top. Bank, straight right hand, hook off the jab. You know, everything is off the jab. That's the setup punch. And I tell everybody, I box. That's the most effective and the most important punch in every punch combination in boxing is the jab. If you got a solid jab, you should be able to beat anybody because they'll never get set. Yeah, and I agree. Uh, I, it's going to be a hard task for you to find someone with a better jab than I have. Uh, when I start jabbing, it gets ugly. It's crazy. Yeah. You could, you could probably stop them. Ali used to knock them out with jabs. With jabs, right. You know, yeah. Speed is power. Yeah. Ali Ali could win a fight strictly on a jab. On the jab. Strictly on his jab. So now, uh, what else I want to ask you? Because uh, this, you know, making that, that hop and that transition and then winning against a guy 3-0, that, that's, that's very commendable uh, because most guys feel like, you know, yeah, the, the handlers feel like, well, yeah, we should carry him properly. I never felt like, because I, if you're going to fight a guy and say, like, well, wait a minute, Bo, this guy is 5-0. and oh, You're just going into your pro debut fight. Yeah, 5-0, and oh, did he really fight anybody himself at 5-0? and oh? And he's never fought Bowler before. That's how I would feel. And I'd be like, you know what? That, the five wins he got means nothing to me. My skill set, and I'm technically sound, and my boxing IQ, I'm gonna take him. Yeah, that, is that the same mindset you feel like as well? Exactly. Yeah. Um, for instance, uh, for or for example, uh, take Tommy Fury. He's eight and zero. Right. <laughs> the 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 first guy he fought was 
10 wins, 102 losses. So you see, and most of the people he fought had uh, losing records. 112 fights he had. Yeah. He only won 10. 10. Yes. So That's like 10%. You, yeah, <laughs> you're right. <laughs> <laughs> exactly you know no, so, there you go good that's a good analogy that's a very you know so um I, we we want to go after the people that have winning records because a lot of people have padded records and that's just how it is and um, that, that's the business unfortunately that's the business i don't feel like i want to have such a padded record because i'm not that kind of guy i know what i'm capable of i know what my skill set is already at what level i'm at on the boxing IQ side, I trust in, in, in everything that my my coaches teach me and instill in me, and I feel like I'm the best. I don't care about those five or ten wins. Put me in there with him and let me show him why he's got ten wins. That's exactly. the thing. This is why you're ten and zero oh, because you're <laughs> fighting the key word. Well, don't say bum, but say nobody's right. That probably had cushion padded records like yourself. Yeah. So exactly. now when you go in there with an opposition that has that probably a slighter edge of skill set than you, now you get to really see that you're not quite the superstar that they thought they were making. Yep, exactly. No disrespect. That's the way I look at it. Yeah, no, you know? that's real. And that's and uh, sooner or later, uh, people will get exposed. You have to, um, especially if you want to move on or move up in the boxing world, you're going to have to, your day is coming where you have to show uh, that you're really capable of doing uh, what your record shows that you've been doing. That's called a, that's when you get what we call a test fight. A test fight, right. <laughs> right, because we're going to really test and see if you're hyped up, if you're the man and, 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 the, and the number one stunner that they built yeah. you up to be. Now we got somewhat of a killer over here. He might be, a previous world champion, but he still got it. Still. How are you going to hold up against him? And he's on his way out. Yep. Yep. Exactly. You know, so, and then as far as the breathing now in this fight and in the amateurs, did you find yourself saying, hey, Bola, get it together, man. Control your breathing. You're a little bit too anxious. Uh, you know, you, 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 you're moving too fast. Slow it all down. We're on a different level now. This is the pros. Yes, I actually did. Um, you could see in during the fight where I was throwing uh, hard haymakers and whatnot, and then I I calmed down. I like stepped back and I was like, okay, stop. Yeah, yeah you, you'll see it in the fight. So I did uh, talk to myself and uh, controlled my breath uh, a little bit more when it came to that. Absolutely. So now what, what are we looking at for the second pro fight? Uh, for Bola, do you have any idea? Maybe not who that's going to be, but do you have a guesstimated, guesstimated time frame and a possible venue where? Still in Chicago? Are you going to be on the road? Have you heard anything since you won this last fight? Well, you said a guesstimated. Um, it's all actually exactly not guesstimated. And uh, I know exactly who the opponent is where it is and the date july 16 uh fighting someone that's one and know his name is Tariq Gr green and we're fighting in philly so um that's in about three weeks july yeah. 1st right when did you say 16th 16th okay yeah. i think I'm, I'm i'll probably i'll probably be able to make that one. I was, if you just said from the first to the sixth i'm like oh i won't be around i'll be out of town but <laughs> The yeah. 16th, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I've done a lot of shows, and I've had some of my fighters fight on those Philly cards at 2300 Arena. Uh, we fought at the college down there. Was it Penn State uh, Arena or whatever? And uh, so, yeah. So that should be good. 1-0 yeah. in Philly. Yeah. And then I think there's another big fight coming up in Chicago. I want to say July 23rd. I don't know what that venue is yet. And that may be all rumor because I've heard that Adrian Brauner is going to be the main event in his comeback fight in Chicago, July 23rd. That would be a hell of an undercard for you to be on. Yeah. At home. Yeah. Yeah. So, we, ag we agree. Um, we heard that, but then there was, there was rumors about it, but then it's not confirmed. 
Right, it's not. So we're not yeah. yeah so. It's not, it's not yeah. confirmed. They even had an opponent. It's not even an opponent. Yeah, it's a tough fight uh, uh, for, uh, Adrian. for Adrian Brown. Yeah, so to come back his first fight without getting any two or three tune-up fights after being off almost over two years, whatever, uh, it's commendable of him to want to step back in the ring uh, so soon with a with a with a with a, a killer, I would say, uh, yeah. very very tough fight for him at one forty seven at that. And you know, I don't really <laughs> feel like he's one forty seven, but uh, Brana's always entertaining and exciting to watch. Now, if we ever get the old Brana back, <laughs> that's 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 focused and on point. Yeah, he could be a, a, a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, you know, and I, I've heard that his trainer has been uh, vigorous and that he is it, gym wise. He's back in in rare form like he once was when he was definitely the problem. Yeah. So now, you know, we we're gonna see uh if we get the old Bronner back. So let's let's talk about other fighters now. Let's talk about what do you think about the uh rematch between Joshua and uh Alexander Usyk? Who do you pick in that fight and why? You know, I gotta go for uh with my people, Anthony Joshua. Uh okay. I gotta be uh however, Usyk is not to be messed with. That guy can box his <laughs> he can box his ass off. Great know? boxing skill. He, he yeah. reminds you of another smaller version of Fury when it comes to footwork and boxing. Yep, he, exactly. He, he can box. Exactly. Or a bigger uh, version of Lomachenko. Lomachenko. There you go. A pause, yeah. So it's going to be a very tough fight for uh, Anthony Joshua. Overall, I think, uh, I, I believe that Usyk is a better boxer than Anthony Joshua, but um, Anthony Joshua could fight. He, he he didn't get to where he was by luck. Uh, right, he fight. He has knockout power. I just feel like he has to bring it to him. He has to bully uh, the dude. He has to bully Usyk in the ring because uh, I'll box him. I don't know if he he can do that. Nah. Could yeah, here's home. the thing. Now now based on him going to California. He's brought Robert Garcia, and Robert Garcia is not the head trainer, but Robert Garcia is in the corner, and Robert Garcia is giving him those bullying tools and tactics that he's going to need to weather that storm of that first fight. Now, here's the thing about fighters. Anthony Joshua is set in his own ways. He's a world champion and has been for quite some time now, made buku of money. Not really hurt for nothing, win, lose, or draw. He can walk away into the sunset and be straight for the rest of his life. Now, do you bring on a new coach teaching you these new things and you go into that fight, maybe first two, three rounds, you try to execute everything he's giving you with the arsenal of tools, but then you backslide to the old you. Oh, yeah. How easy will that be for him to backslide or will he be so focused in the zone with what he's taught, been learned and what he's been taught in camp, carry that torch and do the things that Robert Garcia is expecting him to do per his teachings. Right, exactly. That's why uh, getting good sparring is very important because uh, the good sparring will determine if he slides back to what he's always been doing. So Bad habits. If, yeah. Right, exactly. So if, if you face a tough opponent during sparring, um, then we'll know if he, if he would adjust or if he goes back to uh, his old ways. So that's why that's very important. Okay, real quick before I let you get out of here, yeah. let's talk about the fight everybody's waiting to see, the Undisputed Worth the Championship of the World, Earl the Truth Spence versus my man, Terrence Bud Crawford. Who you picking and why? Because this is going to be one hell of a fight. This might be fight. This might be fight of the, of the, of the year, decade. We don't know. Hey, we we, we going to have a hell of a fight on our hands. Uh, who you got? <laughs> he he interviewed me. <laughs> I, uh, personally, uh, I like I like Spence. I like Bud. I think uh, my heart says I'm going to go with Bud Crawford on this simply because, in my opinion, and I have to say this because everybody gets twisted here and, and get get around up. In my opinion, I feel like Bud has a better skill set. He's more sound. His boxing IQ is higher. I know Spence is a, a bigger puncher. Bud can punch as well. Bud is very slick and crafty 
in that ring opposed to Spence. And I felt, and, 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 and it's fair to say, both fighters' defenses have been somewhat exposed a little bit. So whoever makes the most mistakes, the other one capitalizes. And Bud's really good at capitalizing. So I'm, I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Bud wins this and becomes undisputed welterweight champion of the world. But that's just in my opinion. And I got mad love and respect for my man uh, Derek James and Earl Spence Jr. in that whole stable he got over there in Texas, man. But you asked, I told you. Now nah. you told <laughs> yours, uh, <laughs> right? I uh, I would have to disagree with you. I would say Spence. Um, like you said. I do believe Bud Crawford is a better boxer overall. Yes, that I truly believe that and his skill set is. Uh, let me not say skill set, but I believe he's an overall better boxer. However, from what I've seen and what I've heard about Bud Crawford is, uh, they use a term called "gamey." He's gamey, uh, which they which means, let's say you hit him hard, or you hit him with a good shot, he's gonna come back and like come harder at you if you do that with Errol Spence you're gonna get knocked out you know you or you could get knocked out because right. that's a punch right so that's why I he, say he's a bigger puncher by far right so if he punches you and then you like oh yeah you think you know Bud Crawford you know has that ego or that uh gaminess he could get you know in trouble and I've seen um anyone can get hurt in boxing but I've seen right. Bud Crawford you know get hurt um by I guess Yuvagowskis, whatever the, that guy's name, like three yeah. five ago. So okay. I, I get Spence by KO. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, just, man, you you wrong for that one, there, Gola. <laughs> you, you, you pick up the win. You pick the win by knockout. <laughs> that, KO. It's, it's gonna be a good fight. I, I, no, I can't wait to. Fight, man. Now, hopefully, you know, rumors and talks are saying that. This, this, uh, well, it's really Steven Espinosa wants that that October uh, 29th date to be the date that they go at it in Vegas. And the only place big enough to hold this fight in Vegas is Allegiant Stadium where the Las Vegas Raiders, Raiders. play. Right. And I'm looking at their schedule, and it makes sense because they don't play until Monday night football on Halloween night. Oh. So 29th makes a lot of sense to have that welterweight championship fight on Saturday. Yeah. Uh, but that's nothing's been written and nothing's been released in a press conference. So therefore, we have no uh, validation, nothing solid on this fight other than those talks are happening. And I hope the talks are really happening amongst camps with Al Heyman, opposed to what uh, uh, the, the 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 head honcho of Showtime, Steven Espinosa, wants. That wants is one thing, but what what are the handlers and the people who are really Getting the fighters to come to terms and say, "Hey, here's here's the here's the bout agreement, Crawford. Here's the bout agreement, Spence. Tell us what both of you guys think on your money on the back end for pay per view, uh, the venue. Because people tend to think that Spence should be the one to say, "Hey, you fight at Cowboy Stadium, or uh, we don't fight. Mm. I've got the majority of the belt. You got one belt, which really doesn't hold much clout." in a lot of people's eyes, which is the WBO. So why should I come down and say, well, I think I think Spence should honor that because if you're the best over him, you could beat him if it was in China. Mm -hmm. So let's make this fight happen and give the fans what they want and cut out all, you know, the BS and around. Let's just do it. Make the fight. You know? Hell, yeah. let's just make, make the fight. Yeah. Uh, and I, I agree. I agree with that. Uh, and I uh, agree. I, I agree with what Oscar De La Hoya said too. He said uh, it should be the winner gets 60 or and 60, least, 60, 40 split. Or, yeah, something like that. And I agree. Yeah. It yeah. should be like that. Yeah. yeah. And then, you know, and, and that's, that's like a tournament then. I'm not saying Spence, I'm going to give you 60%. Whoever wins, okay. we got, let's say, let's say they got, we got, we got 20 million on the table. Whoever mm -hmm. wins, going to get 12 million. You know, and whoever loses is gonna get eight. That go to twenty million. That's it. That's your purse. That's it. We're not guaranteeing yeah. either one of you that sixty yeah. percent. If you win it, that's your purse. Twelve that's million. Prize fighting. And then yeah. whatever we agree on on the pay per view sales. Right. Still a good hefty chunk of a payday yeah. for both. For both, exactly. You know, 
Yeah. And then on the rematch clause, there definitely has to be a rematch clause because we got to get two fights. We might could get even three fights out of this. I mean, you know, this yeah. is going to be greater than as big as uh, Sugar Ray when he fought Duran and Hearns too, uh, and Hagler at 54. Yeah, <laughs> I agree. So, or 60, whatever weight that was, he fought Hagler. At. So, yeah, I mean, you know, let's just get it done because if you're saying you're the best in the world, that means you should be able to fight anybody anywhere in the world. Yep. Not just anywhere, only in your world. In your world. <laughs> you did? Yeah. Which is Dallas Cowboys Stadium. Let's yep. fight anybody anywhere in the world. Yeah. Backyard turf don't mean shit. I got the skills. You say you got the skills, and I don't care if we fighting 10 buck too. I'll fight you there. I'm the better <laughs> guy. I'm the better guy, and I say I'm going to beat you for the W. Let's go, champ. <laughs> Straight up. Damn, what, what, what 10 that? buck two do to you? Right, right, right. Simple as that, brother. <laughs> hey, before we get out of here, let the fans know how they can follow you, Bola, and keep up with you and your career on all your social media platforms, brother. Yeah, so you can follow me on Instagram, team underscore Abel, and Abel spelled A-B-E-L. Uh, on Twitter, team Abel3. Uh, those are my handles on social media. Uh, you guys... Um, follow me on there you keep up with me uh and you will be uh part of history and witness greatness in the making you know so awesome. let's get it i appreciate everything appreciate the fans appreciate the support and i appreciate you my uh, man thank you for having me on the brawlers let's ah. get it Hey, listen, my name is Rick Mohammed, Brawler Sports Media. You can follow me on my YouTube channel. If you haven't already subscribed, please go to Brawler Sports Media. Subscribe, set that alarm so when I go live, you guys get those alerts and you can follow my content. You know everywhere I go, I take you guys with me. You're on the flight with me. You're at the fight with me throughout all of the back behind the scenes. Hey, also at uh, Instagram, it's uh, Brawlers underscore sports underscore media. And on Twitter, it is uh, at Brawlers capital M. Hey, Bola, thank you for coming back on the show, man, doing this follow-up with me. That was some great advice that you uh, uh, shared with us about, you know, the transition from amateurs to pros and uh, other other amateurs now get to see exactly what it is they can expect to go through. That was awesome. And, uh, man, we look forward to having you back and following up with you come July 16th in Philadelphia, everybody. Uh, uh, Brawlers will keep you guys abraised as to how you can get on and stream and watch uh, – Bowler go with back into action, back in combat, baby. Hey, bro. Hey, tell them real quick to keep continue to support Brawler Sports Media, Bowler. Hey, you guys, please, 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 please continue to support Brawler Sports Media. Uh, they bring in great content. Uh, Rick Muhammad is a great person, and hey, together we can and we will make it happen. Let's get it, my man. Until next time, that's it, guys. The Brawler Sports Media Boxing Show. I'm Rick Mohammed, my man Bola, and we out of here till next time. Let's go, champs. Boom. Boom. <laughs>